Madam Speaker. I remember at one time when I was at my lowest, like in jail, we are mm. mm. in this uh, conference taking a picture. For some reason, I was at the end of the of the of of the row, you know. Mm -hmm. And this man of God clapped me, actually <laughs> cut me out when I was watching the the the, the, the pictures on social media. I said, "But I was here. Yeah. Where am I?" <laughs> but they cropped you out. Yeah. Welcome to the Safe Space Chats podcast with Madam Speaker. Hi, my name is Perseverance Maremeni, also known as Madam Speaker, also known as the CEO of Self Love. On this podcast, we are creating a safe space for ourselves through heart to heart conversations, encouraging others to do the same. Just because we don't believe in the same things, we don't like the same things, we're not interested in the same things, it does not mean that we cannot coexist. So, this is a safe space for you to exist even when you are different and unique. Welcome to the Safe Space Chats podcast with Madam Speaker. My name is Perseverance Maremeni, also known as Madam Speaker, also known as the CEO of Self Love. I would love to just say a special shout out to our sponsors before we can even start with the episode of today. A big shout out to Hydro Quench for sponsoring us with the water. Big shout out to Crown Lioness for dressing me, even though the cleavage is showing. Please don't judge me, Vazalwanine, because when I announce who our guest is, ooh, sham, your judgment is going to be on 100. And also a big shout out to Send Studio for being our home for all our recordings. Uh, without any further ado, I want to introduce our guest, but I'm going to allow him to introduce himself. Man of Gods, mm. welcome. Mm. <laughs> finally, 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 <laughs> Madam Speak. I don't know whether you like me eh. or you don't like me, <laughs> but I'm glad to be here. My name is Pastor Enoch Perry. I preach the gospel undiluted. Ah, thank you yeah. so much, Man of God, for joining me today. Mm -hmm. Uh, but be honest with me. Yeah. In your own honest opinion of what you think I feel or I see you. Yeah. Do you think I don't like you or what is your... I want to know. Number one, you don't like me. Number two, don't like pastors. Period. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so this is a trend now that that all men of God who come to this podcast they accuse me that I don't like. I, I, and for some reason, eh? yeah, it's like. Whenever I watch your program, mm. I feel like it's like she doesn't like us. Mm. But for some reason, when you call us to come to your show, hey. we, we respond to say, I'm coming, I'm coming, you know. <laughs> maybe today you're going to find out Absolutely. if I really like oh, you yes. or not. Oh, yes. And maybe yes. the reason why you may feel that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pastor Enoch, for the mm. longest time, I think I've said this to you before, yeah, that yeah. for the longest time, uh, I used to consume your content, I think, on one gospel by that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And I was also in ministry during that time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I, I, I need you to, to, to tell me what you think about the, I don't know whether it's temper, tr tantrums, or it's just reacting or what. Yeah. Do you think that as congregants, as somebody that has been consuming your content for, for the longest time, like yeah. before I go to church and minister and everything, I'd be playing your the sermons mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm, By the time I get to church, I've already heard the word beforehand. Mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. I'm busy there singing at the church and everything. Um, do you think as the congregants, ne, we have the right to feel any type of way about you as a man of God, as somebody that we've always looked up to, especially if maybe there's a thing or two that we're not happy. Uh, sure. Yes. Okay. It did. It, it's a, it's, a, it's a very normal mm -hmm. uh, phenomenon because mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, what uh, our viewers need to understand is that we come from different backgrounds mm -hmm. and we hold uh, different uh, ethical values. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, when you are a man of the cloth or you are a pastor and uh, you behave in a certain manner which is not approved by the masses, mm -hmm. there, there are questions, yeah. you know, and, uh, and, and unfortunately... Uh, th such kind of questions are not uh, deliberately uh, answered by the perpetrators mm -hmm. because uh, there's always a, uh, a, a backslash, you know, mm -hmm. where, where you kind of feel even less holier than, 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 than before, you know. So mm -hmm. I do believe people are, are entitled, mm -hmm. but also at the same time, um, like in my experience, th there have been moments where people attacked me in terms of uh, uh, ideology, mm -hmm. philosophy, as well as my belief system, which mm -hmm. is the doctrine. You know, you know, I never, I've never taken it personal. Mm -hmm. But now, when you go to an extent whereby you compromise your Christian values and you get attacked, you know, mm -hmm. that thing can drive you into depression. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, 
uh, uh, in in view to your to your to your question people are entitled and yeah. they, and it's their rights yeah. I, and what i've done over the years when somebody criticizes me uh, on my page i don't delete them mm -hmm. i don't deactivate them i allow, I, I allow them to be on my page because uh, that helps me to maintain balance mm -hmm. even in my presentation and and and, and so forth mm. yeah so as a um, a man of the cloth yeah. right how do you deal with such uh, tongue lash and everything in your personal space? Yeah. Oh, you know, you know, Madam Speaker. To be honest with you, like, uh, like it's, it's in the public space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is one very critical uh, position which every pastor or every man of God find every man or woman of God find themselves in, and that's the position when. Uh, you lose yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you know the, the love of God will never let you go. But mm -hmm. there comes a time where you lose yourself because you have allowed certain things to happen in your life. You know, you know like, like, like uh, allowing water to come into the boat. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the boat might sink. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and the, and the, when, when that happens, it really breaks you. Yeah. But but also at the same time, you know, one thing I love about uh, the scriptures, because it gives provision to people that have compromised their ways, uh, like where the Bible says that the righteous man falls uh, seven times. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, held a position, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, that uh, I qualify to be righteous because... Uh, I have fallen uh, uh, many times, you know mm. what I mean? And, 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 and God still justifies me based on the promise of atonement and promise of, uh, of those who return back to him. Mm. You, you know, like uh, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says, come and let us reason together. Let us settle the matter, you know? So, mm -hmm. so that is a call to people that have uh, uh, compromised their ways, like Israel compromised uh, 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 her ways before the Lord, and the Lord was uh, was reinviting Israel to come back. And the Bible speaks further about a prodigal son. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and I've heard a lot of people talking about the prodigal son, and they hardly speak about the son that remained. Mm -hmm. But the son that remained is the problem. Mm -hmm. The son that remained is the one that causes the prodigal son to feel less accepted by God. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, like, like I was talking to someone um, uh, yesterday that um, if I never had a personal revelation and personal conviction of who Jesus is to me, I was going to, I was going to backslide and I was going to fall further than what people had seen because of circumstances uh, mm -hmm. uh, of life, you know, because uh, there are things that can happen to a person that can really sweep you away, mm -hmm. away from, uh, from your position. But now being swept away from your position doesn't mean that your conscience dies. Mm -hmm. You know, you, 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 you battle with, with, with certain things. For example, uh, Madam Speaker, let me speak to you about uh, the issue of, uh, of alcohol. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, lately, I've been, I'm talking so much to a lot of men, mm -hmm. and I'm talking so much to a lot of people that have been using uh, 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 these uh, substances. And, and and one thing that I'll tell you, and this is one thing that I never knew what people that abuse uh, substances like alcohol, I, I don't want to talk about drugs. Mm -hmm. I've never been there. Mm -hmm. You see, there is what we call withdrawals. Mm -hmm. we, you know, they experience what is known as withdrawal syndrome or some times people would call uh, hangover. Mm -hmm. Now, hangover is the, one of the worst experiences which people undergo, especially if you're drinking to cover up mm -hmm. realities. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I remember at one time, uh, uh, um, I would promise myself that I'm not going to drink tomorrow. I want mm -hmm. to be sober tomorrow and face my day. Mm -hmm. And when my morrow comes, you feel so much low, so much withdrawn, suicidal. Mm. And the only way, the only antidote to that is taking another one. Mm. Then, then just say, no, let, let me just take this little one yeah. to, to keep me aloof. Mm. You know, when you take that one, it actually makes you take another one and another yes. one, another one. Then you are back to square one. Yeah. Now, most of the time when such kind of people, like in that condition where Piri was, mm. comes to our services, we 
do not find means and ways of how do we heal them mm -hmm. how do we give them an antidote to mm -hmm. to, to 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 cure them from uh, the withdrawers to cure them from this suicidal uh, thoughts to cure them from uh, this hangover because hangover is a disease on its own because mm -hmm. it's what keeps people going back mm -hmm. and forth mm -hmm. to drinking so 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 now this uh, 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 for me, uh, lately, has become my special ministry, mm. which was never part of the ministry when God called me into ministry. Yes. Uh, I, I felt God called me into ministry to affirm the church about uh, our God-given mandate of taking dominion. Mm -hmm. I never realized that I would be caught up in a compromised position where I would learn the, the, the pain which people that uh, drink go through mm -hmm. you know you know you know I don't think most people who drink drink for for, for fun mm. or for uh, this is my opinion mm. uh, you know because uh, uh, most people who drink they drink to cover up things that they are going through mm -hmm. and furthermore they drink to cover up that feeling of uh, of withdrawals because that's the worst feeling ever you, you mm -hmm. know because this feeling makes you f feel paranoid it's mm -hmm. like somebody's looking for you. You know, like I remember one time I was at my farm, you know, and uh, and uh, there was a helicopter flying and it was flying very low. Mm. And I felt like the CIA were looking for me. <laughs> and I was I was screaming and running from one room to another mm. room. This is what it does. And, and that's why most people, mm. I recommend rehabilitation. You yeah. need to be rehabilitated because uh, it's one of the things that you can't do on your own. It's, it's so painful. It's so hard. Then you find yourself being drawn back and forth mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah no i think uh, i always say that you know because we are fighting battles yes. internally sometimes we fight things that we don't even have people that we need to talk to right but there's this thing that i think this is one of the reasons why uh, people think i hate pastors because i'm very vocal about yeah, this thing yeah. and you I hate us, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Mara, I don't hate you. you okay. Know, you know, the okay, I love you. Mara, I love you, my vendor girl. Mara, I don't hate you. Man of God. I, I don't have hate in my heart. Yeah, sure, The, the sure. thing with me is Just I am joking, very... Though. Yeah, I'm very yeah. upfront. Yeah? You yeah. know? Mm. So here's the thing. The, the thing that men of God would say, I hate them. Maybe even after this conversation, sure. they can decide whether they mm -hmm, still think mm -hmm, that way mm -hmm. or not. It's... I have this belief, men of God, that if you are not in a position to stand on the pulpit for whatever reason, for whatever that is going on in your personal space or whatever battles, whatever demons that you are fighting, like right now when you when we're talking about alcohol and yeah, th yeah. That, that demon on its own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the purpose of this video, let's just call it a demon, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yet we, we have a tendency of dressing up and we stand by the pulpit. Yeah. And then we speak <clears throat> the word of God. Remember, men of God, whether you are sober or drunk, whether you are going through this or that, at the end of the day, if you are called, you are called. Yeah, You are sure. called 24-7. You go yeah, to sleep yeah, with your calling, yeah, you wake up with your yeah. calling. But my thing that I make so much noise about is the fact that I, I believe that if you're not in a position to stand on the pulpit for whatever reason, mm -hmm. then you should descend the pulpit. Yeah. I think that's where the men of God don't yeah, like me. Yeah. When you descend the pulpit, you fight your demons behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. The pulpit, let it be let it be house to let, yeah, sure, right? Sure. Let us let us go to church, sing, and then go back home. Yeah. Um, what is your take on my belief in that regard? I I hundred percent agree with you. Though there is a it's 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 a, a complicated uh, yeah issue. You, you know, like uh, in my case, I haven't been on the pulpit for a very long time. Yeah. Though I I seem to be active uh, on social media. And uh, I suspended cancelling sessions in my church. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, uh, Bishop uh, Matebula said something very profound to me in one of my uh, personal one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations. Mm -hmm. He said to me, when you are a pastor, uh, a fighter mm -hmm. with a sword and you are not in a good space, you might end up using that sword to pierce into wrong people and uh, destroy uh, wrong people. Now, now, uh, let me tell you, this is uh, my personal experience because yeah. I can only talk about my yes. personal experience. You know, for the first few uh, uh, weeks when I was going through my rough moments, mm. I made a decision to stay away from the pulpit. But then you get the church folks mm -hmm. who says, no, you can't. Mm -hmm. You can't. You, you can't leave us. You, you can't stay away. Mm -hmm. you, you know, even other men of God, there are those men of God who believe that uh, you, you, you can't move away from your position. You, mm -hmm. you, you need to 
keep on uh, on preaching. Now, mm -hmm. this happens, Madam Speaker, and and, and I'll, I'll, I'll be very open mm -hmm. uh, 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 because it will lead me to another position, another another subject rather. Yes. You see, the way the church is designed in Africa, not only in South Africa, okay. in Africa, where we've got the so-called full time workers in the body of Christ mm -hmm. who have never had a formal education beyond metric. And uh, when things are rough or hard, it's impossible for them to get uh, jobs, for them to sustain their lives. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? They, 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 they end up forcing it. No ma kungenzeki. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not happening, but you are forcing yourself to be on the pulpit. Why? Because the pulpit is your is your, is your is your bread and butter, is mm -hmm. your income. You know. So so that's why I've changed a narrative in terms of ministry. Mm -hmm. And I always challenge pastors. Tell me in the scriptures what the Bible speaks about full time ministry mm -hmm. or the so called part time ministry. Because mm -hmm. I found the so called part time ministers are more effective than the full-time yes. minister. This is my opinion. Mm -hmm. so, so now, because we don't have a formal vacation, that's why we end up hanging onto the pulpit. Mm -hmm. the, the tithes and offerings. Yeah. But then if most of them were given a chance to have extra income, mm -hmm. you, you will push the extra income to distract you from even feeling the pain of the things that you are feeling. So, so mm -hmm. I was just trying to answer why most pastors, they would rather not take a break. Because if mm -hmm. I take a break, like remember during COVID, mm -hmm. many pastors were crying. Yeah. Why? Because there was no uh, tithe coming through. Mm -hmm. Most of our churches, we've got, uh, like in our church, we've got very few people who would pay tithes and offerings through FT. What, what do you EFT. Mean? EFT, yeah. very few. Mm -hmm. You know, many of them, they want to bring it in an envelope. Cash, yes. In cash. And, mm -hmm. and most people, were their salaries were downgraded. And pastors were in a mess and they were calling upon, government must be open the church. Yeah. Government must be open the church. And most of them were calling on the church to be reopened because they were hungry. Mm -hmm. Cars were repossessed. Mm -hmm. the houses were repossessed. Most pastors went into, into depression because mm -hmm. uh, that is the only way of survival and, and 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 when you are caught up with a situation where you are compromised mm -hmm. let me use a word compromised yeah. when it comes to the standards of the gospel of jesus christ you want you want to stick around mm -hmm. because first of all, mm -hmm. I, I need to stick around because I, I need to sustain my life i need to sustain myself but uh, I, I agree with you 100 percent in your mm -hmm. position you, you know like uh like i've got many branches across the world mm -hmm. let me say this without exaggerating, maybe in the US one or two mm. branches, Australia one, London maybe two, in Africa, South Africa we've got the majority of branches. Mm -hmm. I never visited any of the branches because I also gave opportunities to pastors to 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 to, to decide. Because at one point, I know it's not part of the questions that you asked me. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at one time, I just she, out of uh, curiosity, I was driving around Sosangove. Then I said, okay, I've got a branch here in Sosangove. Let me just pass by. Not not to greet them mm. by the road, by way. Then I saw that the name has changed from Restoration House to something else. Mm. So okay, you, you know, but it, it's because it you, it becomes personal. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, you say let let it be. Mm -hmm. Then I felt like I don't want to infringe my ideology of my belief system on anybody. Let people make their own decisions. Yeah, both members who come to our church as well as uh, pastors that submit to me, let them make their own uh, uh, decision. Ultimately, mm -hmm. you, you can never be on the pulpit if there is a lack. Remember, uh, 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 um, when, uh, when uh, you are compromised, you, you need to show repentance, mm -hmm. to, even to the people that you are leading, you know, because you, you, can't, you can never be implicated in a rape case mm -hmm. and continue pastoring as normal. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Step aside. Mm -hmm. And if the case is in the court, uh, in the, in the, in, whether in the court of public opinions, mm -hmm. I, I mean, find yourself an opportunity of submitting to somebody whom you can either do counseling or somebody can minister into your life until it comes to a point where you feel that you are ready. And your confession, like, like I said this, mm -hmm. uh, Madam Speaker, that a sin committed in public must be com confessed in public. Mm -hmm. If you have sinned privately, 
do it privately. You don't okay. have, you know, like Assemblies of God and Alliance Church and other churches yes. in the olden days. People would come and testify and confess serious in front of everyone. <laughs> in front of everyone, you know. So I I believe in accountability. Yeah. The church, uh, folks as well as the leaders in the church must be accountable. Mm. If you have found yourself lacking in one way or the other, just confess and mm. and 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 and, and, uh, and come back. We've seen with great men like Jimmy Swaggart mm -hmm. who was compromised. He, he, he repented publicly on a nation television some time back, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he, it's up to the public whether they accept you back mm -hmm. or, or they don't. Because if you've got a record to say, I sinned, I repented, mm -hmm. then at least your story is better. Yeah. Then I sinned, then I defended. Yeah. You know, because we, we've got a lot of people who are apologetic, mm -hmm. defending themselves more than defending the gospel. Yeah. And this is where... I, I I tend to differ with most people who would say, uh, 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 like Peter, you you are an embarrassment to the to the to the body of Christ. You know, mm. like if if I am an embarrassment, then Peter is more of an embarrassment. Yeah. yeah. Because the Bible says Jesus said to him, "When you repent and you are restored, go back and encourage mm -hmm. your brother." So so you, 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 your second episode of your life should always be greater than before. That's yeah. where you assignment mm. is redefined. So we are not called by God to be clearing agents, mm -hmm. to clear our names. No, mm. you can't clear no name. Yeah. The only name that we can defend is the name of Jesus. If you have sinned, you've sinned. Mm. You, you can't do it any other way. You know, you are human. You are a man of God, anointed by God, called by God, because with the gifts of God, there is no repentance. Mm -hmm. If God has called you, God has called yes. you. But then... It's how, it's how do you take it? Mm -hmm. It goes back to, to, to what I said earlier on that uh, most of us, we were not trained with uh, extra skills mm -hmm. which can make us sustain ourselves beyond the pulpit. So mm -hmm. when the pulpit is compromised, when you see, there's nothing as, as hideous as somebody to take the people of God for granted and, and, and bringing shame mm -hmm. on the pulpit because you, you can't step aside because you, 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 you want to sustain yourself. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so this is where my position is. In, in short, I agree with your position. Mm. At least I agree with you on just that one. But that's the one that actually gets me into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so if you agree with that one, then that means yeah. that I'm safe. Yeah, sure. Uh, but to be, let's, if, if we're to be honest, yeah. right, and realistic, because, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm also uh, uh, fallen something from, from the... Sure. Yeah, I fell from grace. Yeah, yeah let me just sure. put it that way. Ne? But I want us to talk about the reality of this restoration that we preach. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, you are Pastor Inopiri you you used to inspire Bo perseverance when she was still ministering. Yeah, yeah. Um, things happen, life happens, you fall off the way God, right? Yeah, yeah. When you now repent and you you acknowledge your mistakes and you take accountability. Yeah. Let's talk about the reality of the church response towards you coming back for the. Remember the first time when I was looking, Pastor Piri. Uh, there's a lot of work that one needs to do within sure. themselves to be able yeah. to look at, like I, like I said, I can really be angry at you for the fact that, you know, for the, for the longest time I used to listen to your sermons yeah, and sure. do everything, but now you've disappointed me because I never expected something like this yeah, from you. Yeah. But now we're talking about me coming back and sitting with you and still giving you the honor and acknowledge the gift that God has given you. Yeah, yeah. Is there really such a thing in our churches today as total, in your experience, yeah. as total restoration to a point where people look beyond the number of times you've fallen. Yeah. You know, Madam Speaker, that's a one million dollar question. Mm. I'll tell you, the, the, the two things will happen to you. And, uh, and uh, number one, uh, you, <laughs> you, you know, you know I, I remember when you, when you, mm. when you <laughs> <laughs> posted uh, those videos of being in a very compromised position. I'll yeah. tell you what happened. Yeah. I, I mean, like, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, that was... During that time, I was on the part of uh, restoration. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's this relapse. You relapse. And when you mm -hmm. relapse, you fall hard. Yeah. You, you know, and this made me to think through a lot of things. After that, mm -hmm. I got calls from all over the world. Mm -hmm. People saying, Pastor Piri, I'm a pastor. And I've got the same problem. Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah. so the, 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 the response to restoration 
is two way. Number mm-hmm. one, you are going to find your tribe. Mm-hmm. People not who are condoning it, but people who are suffering as a result of the same. Mm-hmm. Who are saying, my brother, mm-hmm. I'm in the same place. I'm mm-hmm. in the same position. How do we help each other? I'm telling you, I'm not doing... F- a, 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 a question coming from non believers a question mm. coming from believers and Christians. Yeah. Okay. Then also you got uh, 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 people uh, who say, how, how, uh, how can, how dare? Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Now, mm-hmm. I travel across the world and I travel across the country. And, the, and the, I meet people with uh, very different religious backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And the, and these are the people that inspires me who say to me, Pastor Piri, wow, I hate you uh, talking about how you've fallen mm-hmm. and repenting and apologizing to the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Wow, what a bold move. I wish I can do that. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah. uh, 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 you know, South Africa has got over 60, bi- 60 million people. Mm-hmm. Out of 60 million people, if God can give me an opportunity of inspiring just one million. Just one million. Yeah. You, you know, I can even be humble enough and saying just one person mm-hmm. who would say, you know what? I have seen you like Samson, mm-hmm. anointed, rising up, and get to a point whereby you get compromised by Delilah. Mm-hmm. And I have seen the restoration taking place and uh, God using you by killing more Philistines than you mm-hmm. ever killed in your life. Because that's what restoration is all about. Yeah. Because you see, you see, uh, uh, w- 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 you always got to be uh, judged. Let me, let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. Even before the issues rose up, mm-hmm. I wasn't liked by certain Yes. People within the body of Christ of certain persuasion, mm-hmm. they never liked me. Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I, I never understood why uh, a, pe- a person must sell water, why a person must yeah. sell oil. I, I never understood. And I spoke about these things mm-hmm. on, the, on, on the pulpit because mm-hmm. uh, uh, for me, I've got a friend uh, of mine, uh, Bishop Shabalala, uh, who is always, uh, with, when, whenever you see Bishop Benjamin Dobe, mm-hmm. Shabalala is there. Mm-hmm. Shabalala comes from Zion. And he said, he, he said something to challenge me on one of the shows on, uh, on television. He said to me, Piri, Nina, he used to attack us that uh, we are using Suasho. But yes. now we are using the same Suasho in, in the charismatic Pentecostal circles. Mm-hmm. And I've been very much vocal because I've never understood why people must sell the so-called anointed water or anointed uh, uh, oil and so forth. I never mm-hmm. understood. I use oil in my personal capacity and I use oil to pray for people. But then if we are to commercialize the gospel, mm-hmm. it's another thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So such kind of people within the body of Christ never never really liked me because some of them thought I was attacking their pastors or their bishops. Mm-hmm. They never liked me. But then I was obviously used to that. Mm-hmm. And, and the, going further to a point where people start now not liking you, because of being compromised in a certain way, it hurts mm. because it's personal. But then what keeps you moving and keeps you going for some reason, Madam Speaker, I'll tell you, uh, if I can meet two people who would dislike me, I'll meet four more people who say, Pastor Piri, I'm proud of you. Mm-hmm. I'm proud that you are able to speak the truth as it is. And I'm, able, I'm proud because you are able to confess even publicly of where you have run short of God's glory Mm -hmm. and you are able to make a commitment to restoration because uh, restoration is not just by word. Mm -hmm. Restoration has to do by, by just uh, rather has to go also with commitment to to it. Mm -hmm. And and also there's always that encouragement which comes after you've restored. Mm -hmm. Do you imagine how Peter felt? Thank God the Gospels were written after most of them have died. Mm-hmm. Now, if Peter was alive and he would uh, listen to Matthew mm-hmm. narrating the story, how he fell from grace by denying mm. Jesus three times, I don't mm. think Peter would say, that was my happiest moment. I mm-hmm. think these were the moments where Peter would say, wow, yeah. at that moment, I felt like a coward. Mm-hmm. I felt like a loser. At that moment, I felt weak. Yeah. But thank God for the grace which has been provided. Mm-hmm. Now, when you look at the ministry of Peter in chapter 2 of Acts, mm-hmm. this is what Peter says. You, the Jesus whom you 
crucified. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's speaking this in attendance of all nations under heaven in one roof. Mm -hmm. He's saying, even challenging the Roman soldiers who were there, perhaps some of them who crucified Jesus directly were there. He said, you, who Jesus Christ, whom you crucified. Now, mm -hmm. the declaration of Peter on that morning, my sister, gives him an upper hand mm -hmm. and, in fact, authority. You know, let me tell you this, my lady. Mm -hmm. yeah? But you know, I, I love you, especially when you speak about divorce. Mm -hmm. you, you, the way you, you talk about it, and I can say you can't talk about it because why? You've got authority. Mm -hmm. There are people who don't have authority to speak about divorce, but they just preach. Mm -hmm. There are people who don't have authority. I don't want to listen to a man who's broke mm -hmm. to tell me of wealth to mm -hmm. teach me about wealth. Mm -hmm. Do you have authority? I remember when I was invited once at. Uh, at a, at a morning live to mm -hmm. speak about land redistribution uh, in South Africa. T it was towards the general election uh, some time back. Mm -hmm. the, the, the first question I got from the producer was, do you have authority to speak about land? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, I have. Then asked me, then she asked me, give me proof. I said, I'm a student. I've done anthropology, mm -hmm. sociology, in the theology as in Basela. Mm -hmm. Hence, I've got authority to speak over the subject. Mm -hmm. So now, when we speak about restoring men, because, because you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, men in the church are scarce, are not there. Mm -hmm. It's either, when you see a man, it's either is he, is he, is in the Shebin, or a man is in prison, mm -hmm. or a man is loitering the freeway. Mm -hmm. In every freeway, you're going to see at least one man loitering. Yeah. And the We've got our sisters busy believing God for marriages. And where are these men? Mm. They're in these three places. Sure. Now, for God to give me authority to speak to those men in the bin, mm. I need to know how it feels to have a hangover. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember uh, the, the late Zinzi Mandela had an engagement. They, they, inv they invited me to come and speak. Mm. And, uh, and guess what? Hey, I was having a serious hangover. <laughs> I, couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't make it to that program, you know. Mm. And uh, David Mulapo called me, Peter, where are you? Where are you? Mm. You know, he came to my house. He made sure that I washed, I dressed up, and I walked like a zombie. Now, if you don't understand that life, mm. you are going to judge this man. That's why these men are foreign to the church. Yeah. They can't come to church because uh, the church, religiously, we don't mm. understand the pain they go through. So for me, Madam Speaker, as part of my restoration, mm -hmm. I don't want to say God allowed it, no. Mm -hmm. But then God is God. He can allow stones to worship him. Now, God mm -hmm. can allow your sad books to be a reflection mm -hmm. of who God's uh, 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 hope mm -hmm. for the people and also God's restoration. You know, uh, you know we have seen uh, people committing suicide, yeah. which most of them have had like a very close relationship with. Mm -hmm. Very close relationship with, with I don't want to mention their names, some yeah. of them very famous. And, and because of the substance abuse, yeah. like that emptiness which you feel the following day after abusing drugs or mm -hmm. abusing alcohol, that emptiness, that those withdrawers, my sister, mm -hmm. they lead people to feel useless, mm -hmm. useless. If I talk about useless, I'm talking about useless. Mm -hmm. My younger brother, Bishop Eddie, has been a great help to me. He would whisper into my ears and say, you know, Enoch, you're a great man. Mm. You don't belong here. This is, this is where that prodigal son was, mm. a place where he was eating from the food of the pigs. You don't belong among the pigs. Mm. Dress up, walk out of this pig house and go back to the father. He's waiting for you with a signet ring. Mm. So, so, so in all matters of, of reality, let me tell you this, Madam Speaker. For the first time in my life and in my entire ministry, mm. I can get invited by, 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 by nine believers, hardcore nine believers. Mm -hmm. They say, Peter, come speak to us. We know you understand us. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm part of uh, the GP nations. I, li I, love, I love my Jeep. Mm -hmm. So I'm part of the Jeep nation of people that drive Wranglers across the country. Mm -hmm. And many of them, they don't even go to church. They say, I'm from this city. Pray for us. Mm. Uh, give us a word of encouragement. Speak to into our lives. So, mm. as a result of my setback, God has given me a new audience because uh, I've seen most people that have been using uh, substances mm. like alcohol, 
whether cabinet ministers, members of parliament, judges and uh, lawyers, advocates, teachers, nurses, they trust me mm -hmm. because they know I've been there and I can relate to their story much better than uh, a regular mm. pastor yeah. who, who has been holier than thou the whole of his or her life. You know, so yes, it, it is an embarrassment, but at the same time, it is an opportunity to, to yeah. speak to that club Mm. of people. I wanted to say to that tribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But then do you think, um, in as much as I, I said earlier on that I would feel some sort of way because I would feel betrayed, even though you didn't sign a contract with me, right? Yeah. I feel betrayed that I was looking up to you. You didn't even ask me to look up to you, by yeah, the way. Yeah, and so, I did. Yeah, yeah. And now I will be throwing tantrums at you for deceiving me, even though you didn't tell me yeah, what you were. Yeah. Um, are you as a man of God... Do you ever get to a point where you feel that church head, where you look at the Christians in the church and you say, you people, all of you, you are, you are traitors, or you feel like they're not supporting you as much as you thought they would support you when you are now down and out, especially people that you were supporting when they were down and out. Are you in a position to, to feel entitled to anything from the people that you are feeding spiritually? Yeah, you can say that again. You know, you know, like... Uh you know, one of of uh, the things that I can proudly say, uh, I'm, by the way, I'm vocally wounded, okay. but God gave me grace to be one of the pioneers of one gospel, okay. uh, which was the first of its kind in mm. uh, in Africa, because in those days we were broadcasting in uh, in uh, in over forty countries across the continent. You know, mm. I was so much proud, and uh, I felt to be part and parcel of the of the gospel. Uh, 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 industry, I felt to be part of it. And, and uh, I looked for gospel artists who were struggling. You know, I was there. I remember with uh, Mzwa Kembuli at, uh, many times in the past, we were there for a lot of people that were disowned by their labels, literally, mm -hmm. like, were there. Mm -hmm. Though I know people wrote what they had to write about Mzwake because he was the man <laughs> in front of, mm -hmm. of, of, of it all. You know, and the and the I married a point that I would um, I would uh, pay a, a, a gospel artist to come to our church and uh, beyond, you know, uh, at uh, many platforms. I just wanted them to be there. Mm -hmm. Then he, I even went further, you know, every pastor that I would hear that is struggling, he lost a car, I would mobilize other pastors. Let's raise money for, mm. for, for him. I remember at one time we raised money for one pastor in Tembisa, and the Bishop Nala was part of that program. We 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 bought him a Mercedes Benz, mm. and I, I I felt that was my duty. Mm. Now you see now this is very interesting, Madam Speaker. I remember at one time when I was at my lowest, like in jail, we are posing, and I'm in this uh, conference taking a picture. For some reason, I was at the end of the of the of of the row, you know, mm -hmm. and this man of God clopped me actually <laughs> cut me out when I was watching the the, the 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 pictures on social media. I said, "But I was here. Yeah. Where am I?" <laughs> but they cropped you out. Yeah, they are. You know, so I felt betrayed. I mm. felt betrayed. Then it, 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 it became an. Uh, 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 God gave me a new message. Okay. God gave me a new message uh, about um, God knowing your name and God knowing your assignment. And when God is about to do something new mm -hmm. in your life, for some reason, God breaks everything so that there's no reference whatsoever mm -hmm. to anything of the past. Mm -hmm. Like the Bible says, behold, I'm doing something new. Mm -hmm. He's removing everything of the past. So I felt that... Oh, is this a reality of, uh, of, of, of ministry? A lot of people uh, 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 who were like every day, like would call you, every day would come to you, every day they would make sure that you are on their pulpit, you're ministering the gospel. They just kind of disappeared. Mm. And, and when I say this, you, you know, I, I, don't, I, I can mention other people, mm. uh, not all of them, of course, like yeah. we, among non-preachers, like Bishop Benjamin Dube, uh, he's been, he's gone through divorce at one time. And uh, <laughs> I remember on the 9th of November, that's my birth uh, 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 date. And uh, he surprised, he just came to my house mm. with uh, the CEO or managing director of TBN like him because they just showed up at my, mm. and you see that thing broke. I, I cried actually, I mm. cried. I cried 
and they prayed for me and I, it felt so beautiful. Bishop Musa Sono literally drove to my house though he mm. found me drunk. Mm. <laughs> you know, so there are a number of bishops and a number of pastors that came to my house who reached out to me and also on the contrast, there were those who cancelled my programs. Mm. They, they cancelled, literally, they cancelled, we don't want to have Associated, you here. And, yeah. and, the, and the, uh, they don't write you an email to tell you, we, you, you, you are not coming to us. Others, they say, you know, it's got a spirit of divorce. Mm. So other members, they say, no, the pastor is going through a divorce. Because they don't want to know who's initiating the divorce or not. Mm -hmm. He's going through a divorce. It's got a spirit of divorce. I'm leaving the church. I'm going somewhere else. And these are people that you have helped, you've seen mm -hmm. through. Now, yes, it did hurt me. Mm -hmm. At one time, actually, it broke me. It paralyzed me. Yeah. Until God has to reaffirm what he has said. He said, I'm not man. This is what God said. I'm not man that I should lie. So mm -hmm. ultimately, God is not like me. He's not like you. Mm -hmm. God is not like he, anybody that we know. God is God. He's beyond human comprehension, human understanding. And the, his nature has drawn me closer to him, like, mm -hmm. like right now. Mm -hmm. you, you, know, you know, Madam Speaker, I've had a lot of interviews in my life, a lot of interviews. I've, I was, uh, uh, I've been on TV for over 15 years mm. and, uh, and I did radio interviews. I did uh, uh, TV interviews across the globe, mm. y you know, in the recent past. Okay. Like then though, th let me finish my statement though. Then I, I would pray over every interview. I mean, mm. I would not even pray over in, in, this is what I wanted to say. Let me, let me clarify it. I won't pray when I'm invited for it. I'll, I'll just go yeah. and we talk. But lately, every interview that I would attend, I would take time and mm. seek the face of the Lord, uh, uh, that Lord, let what will come out of my mouth be, be, be uplifting to somebody. Mm. Let, let people see a weak period, mm. a weak, very weak period, mm. and a, a period who is saved by the grace. It's the grace. Mm. You, you know, because many people don't make it to where I have reached. They don't. They, they die in the wayside. I know mm. many people that have have divorced, who have really have had lives messed up. And I was bragging to somebody to say, you know what, people go through divorce and they get broke. Mm. God never allowed me to be broke mm. by his grace. He never yeah. allowed me to be broke. He, he, he allowed me to sustain my family, to look after my children, mm. even in the most toughest moments of my life. Mm. And even at the lowest peak, I was getting jobs. Mm. <laughs> I was getting jobs. Sometimes I wouldn't show up. Mm. But I would request for another opportunity. It's just a mess mm -hmm. when, when you are going through uh, certain moments in your life and you blame everybody. Yeah. Until I learned to take responsibility. I couldn't, even when I saw that video, I didn't blame you. Mm. Though I reached out to you to say, you know, I, I, I think I deserve a right of reply. This is what I yeah. I think in my one of my, my messages mm. I sent to you, I, I, I wasn't angry at you. I wasn't angry at anybody who was angry with me because, mm. uh, you know, because you, you must remember when, when, uh, when uh, you fall from the grace, there's a price to pay. Mm -hmm. There's a price to pay. And one of the prices that you must pay is a, is a, is a, is a backlash. It's mm -hmm. a price. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the story of Jonah is very interesting. When Jonah was going to preach in Nineveh. I was actually reading that this morning on yeah. the way here. You know, Jonah, mm. do you know that price? Oh, do you know the, 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 everything was paid for, mm. for him to preach in Nineveh? Yeah. Now, the Bible says, then he took another ship to Tashish and he paid mm. the price. So there's nothing wrong when you go through a desert as a result of the things that you've done. Because mm. you can't talk about restoration without restitution. Mm -hmm. You know, restitution comes in different ways. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and like, I'm, I'm a very big um, uh, advocate on uh, issues of reparation. Mm -hmm. I believe the West must pay reparation to the African people for the colonialism and uh, slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, 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 and I, 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 ironically speaking, Germany is the first country, Germany, not first country, one of the first countries to condemn South Africa for pointing out some genocide going on in Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, Germany forgets about the recent genocide they did with the, with the, with the people of Namibia. Mm -hmm. that, that was the pure genocide and uh, reparation needs to be paid. Yeah. So, so now when it comes to our livelihood as Christians, sometimes when uh, you stumble, mm -hmm. God won't just let you go unpunished. God yeah. has to give you a, a, a whip. So when you get a backlash, consider it as a way of restitution. Uh, 
restitution, paying restitution because mm. uh, there is always repercussion to yeah. anything and everything that we do. You yeah. know, especially if you do it, uh, 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 if you do rather something which is not uh, constituted in mm -hmm. the Bible, you must pay restitution. Mm. And when people uh, uh, criticize you, consider it as part of the repayment for yes. the for the things that you've done. But also at the same time, as much as you need to prove to people that uh, God who lives in me is real, mm -hmm. you must also prove yourself to God, first and yeah. foremost. Because most of the time, especially in ministry, when you have been compromised, I, I use the word compromised, mm -hmm. so by committing sin or what, mm -hmm. whatsoever, most of the time we seek God so that the public or the community accepts you back, mm -hmm. which is a wrong attitude. Yeah. You must seek God to accept you back. Yes. When God accepts you back, of the 60 million population in South Africa, there will be a specific group mm -hmm. which will relate to your story. Yeah. You know, that hidden group, which is not even known in the church, mm -hmm. that group would say, Piri, I hear you and I can relate to, you, to your story. Mm -hmm. I've, I am where you've been. And, and can you please help me to come out of my situation? And this is what I'm getting right now. Yes. I'm getting calls from all over. Like, like, like um, I was in Turkey a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. In Turkey, in a Muslim country, I was talking to men who have been abused. <laughs> I'm talking about serious abuse who were yeah. in prison, came out of prison, and these men have, were raped in prison. Mm -hmm. And when they got out of prison, they because everybody in prison... Uh, knows what happened and for some reason the messages reach, leaks to the public and they feel like they're outcasts. Mm. Then uh, God gave me an opportunity of ministering to them. Mm. These are Muslims. Now, I'm, I'm speaking to them because I don't want to offend them. I'm talking to them. Then one of them said to me, can you please show us your God? Mm. Oh, your God. Oh, my God is Jesus. Remember, I'm in a Muslim country. Yeah. So so, so I thought, wow, well, I never had this opportunity before, but God now mm -hmm. has awarded me an opportunity where I can speak to a group of people who are neglected and rejected religiously by the mm. church. Yeah, I hear. So, so it's, it's, it's part of the package. Yeah, you know when uh, uh, I think even our our young people need to know, mm. uh, even pastors in ministry need to know that when you compromise the the, the, the truth of the word of God, you do the wrong. Yet you know how to do the right. There are repercussions. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you go through that period of uh, paying back for the things that you've done, don't mm -hmm. think God is punishing you. Yeah. Consider yourself as a debtor paying back to whatever that you, you, <laughs> you have done. You know? yeah. But you feel like to a certain degree, there are certain people that have no right to throw such um, at you let's say tongue lash because we're calling it tongue lash, yeah, right? Yeah. Do you feel like you can pick and choose to say, you as my brother, you have every right to say whatever because you are close to me. You as perseverance, because you were just a consumer and I didn't even ask you yeah. to come and follow the gospel that I'm preaching, then you have no right to feel or to react in any way. Or do you feel like any kind of tongue lash that comes because it comes with that um, step, to the higher to 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 higher uh, glory, right? Mm -hmm. Is it all necessary? You see, um, you know, you know, what I've learned mm. is, is is that I think I, I learned this at a very uh, tender age. Mm. You know, uh, one word which is called a fallacy. Mm. A fallacy. It's a norm which is accepted in one community and not accepted in another community. It's mm -hmm. called a fallacy. Now, when where a fallacy is concerned, you can't really beat yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 secondly, what I've learned, especially in, in my recent past, mm -hmm. what I've learned is that uh, 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 I've told myself that uh, I will never submit to any man mm -hmm. who has never fallen. Or in a woman who has never fallen, I'll never submit to them, and uh, I won't be entitled mm -hmm. to allow them to speak over my life. Mm -hmm. you, you know, like uh, uh, specifically, I've got reasons why I've spoken to certain uh, men of God. It's mm -hmm. because of their track record. Now, we we must distinguish the two okay. between um, uh, 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 between. Um, 
misrepresenting the gospel okay. and falling sure. from grace. The, the two are different. Mm -hmm. So now, we, we, in this regard, I'm talking about falling from grace. Okay. You, see? you see, if a man who has no marks of a warrior, a marks which shows that he's been in battle, he's fought, and he can mm. come out of it and, uh, mm. and, and talk about half of his brain, about his experiences. Mm -hmm. If that man has been there, I've got all right of listening to them. Mm -hmm. But then people are entitled. You, 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 you must remember something, uh, uh, um, uh, Madam Speaker. There are people that really look up to you. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say is the gospel truth. Mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 the, and the Bible descri describes them as weak in the faith. Mm -hmm. That be careful to do whatever you do that you don't offend them. Mm -hmm. you know, so you, you, you can't judge them either. You, you, you can't cut them off your line either. That's why even on my social media platform, people that criticize me, those who criticize me, I remember at one time when we kind of of uh, defended Makamu, you know the story of Makamu. Mm -hmm. At one point, we mm -hmm. were being tongue last every day. Me and Maponga would become the bread and butter of the South Africans mm -hmm. when they wake up. My parents <laughs> wait when they wake up, and and yes, we messed up. Mm -hmm. we, we had to write letter of apology to 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 the to the to the to the, to the country, mm -hmm. uh, and and also at the same time we met hypocrites mm -hmm. who says Abasa, Nyabatin, Pi, mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying? Even a man you get people to say what, what's wrong? You you were drinking your house. What's wrong? You get mm -hmm. people like that to say it was in your house. It wasn't. You get people like that who just want to justify things. But also at the same time, you need to consider those that are weak in the faith. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the perseverances of this world mm -hmm. when they are uh, when they show their disappointments mm -hmm. for not walking according to the truth of the word of God. We, we, we have to take it. Yes. But then, if you meet a man like Piri, if you met me mm -hmm. 15 years ago, I would be very vocal and I would really uh, grab you by your neck and mm -hmm. I will call you to order publicly. Mm -hmm. But then, if you can meet me 15 years later, like today, mm -hmm. I will make a special visit to your house. Mm -hmm like the late Zahara, mm -hmm. when uh, there were media uh, cases uh, of her uh, going through whatever she was going through. I felt at that time, though I wasn't 100% healed, mm -hmm. but I, I could relate to her story. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I reached out to her to say, Zahara, we can pray together. We can hold hands mm -hmm. together. I remember Patrice Mtsipe had a certain program for the, uh, for the soccer uh uh, people for sports, let me put it in that mm. way. And I met her there in the backstage. We held hands and mm. uh, we, we said a, a short prayer. And uh, and uh, maybe if it was uh, those days, I was going to even put on social media to say, uh, what a moment praying for Zahara to break away from this weakness. Mm. Perhaps I was going to do that. But, but you know, when, when God allows you to go through certain things, you, you, you get to a point where, you understand yeah. certain dynamics. Mm. And, and um, when you pray, you know, and when you speak into someone's life, you know. Mm. You, you know, you know, there are people, I remember when I met a uh, 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 pastor, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, he just saw me after a very long time after he has read a lot of things about me. You know, he just held my hand, hugged me and said to me, Piri, Zobarite, mm. Zobarite Piri. Mm. And he hugged me again. And you know that you're talking to a legend. Yeah. You are talking to a man who understands bruises. Mm -hmm. I don't know his story, but by the way he held me, by the way he spoke to me, mm -hmm. I knew that he, he's been there. Also at the same time, you know, you go into the airport and something say somebody say, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you don't know whether you should <laughs> greet or run. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. but in all angles, I've learned one thing, uh, 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 Madam Speaker. Like that's why I even said uh, in one of the uh, posts on my social media, I said I apologize to those I have offended. Mm -hmm. Though others were saying, "No, you've got no right to apologize. You didn't mm -hmm. offend nobody." Yes, I have a right to to apologize because uh, this gospel, it's it, this gospel that I've received from Jesus. It is not a personal gospel which mm -hmm. belongs to Piri. It is a communal gospel, mm -hmm. and if I do something. I also compromise the integrity 
of others who are preaching the same gospel. Because mm -hmm. I go through the same where somebody says, Yeah, Nina Befundis. Nenza so, Minangiti Abobani, Nina Befundis. So whenever I need who pass us one, so no one fag who pass us one. So I'm saying, yeah. so it offends me when people align me mm. to another pastor who has committed some kind of a crime and so forth. So, so if I was offended by what people said, especially cops, mm -hmm. they would say, ah, Peter Nenza Lok and Lok, because they're referring to a news article by another pastor, not yeah. even me. Yeah. It could offend me to say, like I would always say to the police officers, to say, okay, say, would you be comfortable if I can talk about you mm -hmm. based on other, uh, or if I can refer to you based on other uh, police officials who are in prison for corruption. Mm -hmm. So no, 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 I won't be happy. I said, there, yeah, please, just respect my space. Yeah. It offends me. Hence, I am entitled to apologize to the nation, to apologize to, to people where I've gone wrong and where I've offended the integrity mm -hmm. of the gospel. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, going back to the issue of the Pastor Piri 15 years ago and the Pastor Piri now, I can kind of relate in a way because... Uh, when people don't like me, because I, I yeah. believe we all know people. Do, not everybody likes me. Yeah, uh, with I, 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 me, as you are so sweet, shame. As... <laughs> people don't know that. Yeah, only yeah. people who have been like who have mm -hmm. been close to me, like this close proximity. Yeah, it's yeah. only those that sure, know that I'm sure, actually sure. very. I'm not. I'm it's, harmless. It, it is your PA who's a problem. My PA is the. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, that one is that, a that child is a problem. It's a, that one is the one who's bullying yeah, everyone. Yeah, that that one is a bully. Hey. Anyway, it's, it's not about her for today. <laughs> Can you guys? Okay, can you? Yo, the one we always okay, talk about super. every day. Okay, you are super. Yes. Yeah. Mara, uh, what I wanted to say is that um, I could relate in a way that perseverance, what 2015 maybe. Yeah. yeah. I would totally hate this this madam speaker that just rose out of nowhere yeah, yeah. and start calling things the way they are. Because with me, I always say that it's either you like me or you hate me. Yeah, there is no in yeah, between. Yeah, because yeah. I don't have gray lines. I don't have, because it's so and so, maybe, you know, we must yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah that's me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. people like that, obviously you can't like them. So that's mm. what I'm saying that the Pastor Piri who was sharpshooter, because you didn't have your own personal experience of what other people were going through, you could not relate. Yeah. But now because you can relate, you kind of sympathize a bit when it comes to that, yeah. right? And um, for me, now going back to the issue of um, weak Christians, okay, not, I don't know yes, which word yes. to use, right? Yeah. But because, remember, if I'm saying... The Bible that, actually describes them as weak brothers. Okay. So we can say weak so sisters, we are safe. weak brothers, yes. weak Christians, we okay. are safe. We are safe. So as a weak brother, or as a weak sister, ne, yeah. who is consuming your gospel. Yeah. And every time when you, you speak, I'm like, you, 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 you've hit, you, you are, you are yeah. speaking to my heart. Yeah. 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 Um, and I've seen this in, in churches and a lot of times where when people want to testify, you know, I want to thank God. People don't thank God. They thank the man of God. Yeah, yeah. And I remember as a man of God who is preaching the gospel as it is, right? And then people come around and then they, they, they worship you, they idolize you. Yeah. Which I believe or would say it comes with that weakness mm -hmm. of me going to a point where, okay, I see man of God is preaching the word of God and it, I'm resonating with it so much. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to a point where beyond that, I still expect him to be God mm -hmm. because he must not do any wrong. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that we as the people who are on the forefront, ne, mm -hmm. we are influencing or we are not doing enough in terms of saying, disclaimer first before, before I ascend uh, here mm -hmm. and preach. Mm -hmm. Guys, please remember, I'm a human being. Or is it? Does it only take us having these experiences for 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 people to actually have that wake up call individually to say, okay, no, he's actually still a, a human being before he's this this and that. Okay, I'm going to answer you from this angle. Mm. Uh, I, I was bothered. I was at a Hilton Hotel in Istanbul, uh, uh, in Turkey, like three weeks ago. Mm. What bothered me was that. Uh, 70% uh, of the New Testament was written in Turkey, 70%. Mm. The, the seven churches which are addressed in the book of Revelation are mm. in Turkey. Mm. Today, Turkey is a Muslim country. Sure. And uh, what bothered me, Madam Speaker, is that how did we get here mm. whereby Christianity is the minority, mm. yet in the first century it was the ma majority? Yeah. Then I discovered that uh, because the gospel Fast forward to 2,000 years mm -hmm. later. The gospel which we are presenting is the gospel of number one, 
uh, uh, prosperity. Mm -hmm. Number two is the gospel of uh, presenting God as Father Christmas. Mm -hmm. Number three, it is the gospel of every Jack and Harry mm -hmm. who finds themselves under the bus must just come and receive and go. Mm -hmm. we, we don't take that precious time to educate our people mm -hmm. and uh, educating them to a point where they realize that uh, it is about Jesus, not about the man of God. Mm -hmm. And when we don't adequately do that, our inadequacies comes to bite us. Mm -hmm. But the temptation is very high. Two occasions have happened in my life. At one time, one man drove or flew from Richards Bay with a plastic bag full of 200 rands mm. in total of 70,000 rands. Mm. Put it under my feet and he said to me, Pastor Piri, can you talk to your God <laughs> to heal my sickness and mm. my disease? It was very tempting. Mm. And then, how do I educate this fellow? Mm. That uh, our God, uh, is, 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 the, the, the Lord's prayer, when just taught his disciples, yeah. he says to them, this is how you must pray. Yeah. Our Father. Father. He, he didn't say my Father. Yes. It's our Father. So yeah. we, when you come to me asking for my prayers, I'm going to pray to our mm -hmm. Father as brothers and sisters, where and two, where two and three have gathered in my name, yes. there I am. Yes. You know. So now the temptation is, and I spoke to one man, very, very famous man, mm. been on TV for years. Actually, he rebuked me. Mm. He said to me, Piri is often super. The reason is you are showing the people a man. Jesus. Yeah. You must show people a man in you. Okay. Yes. It's it it, it is an, there's this subtle theology which has crept into the charismatic church mm. where literally people are showing the congregants who they are, mm -hmm. not the men on the cross. Yeah. So that's why these uh, churches, I greet the first lady, I greet the you, you know, the first lady <laughs> and the first gentleman. Mm. It be, it has become like he, uh, you're worshiping and no, those people, yeah. You worship these people. Mm. And and it only gets to us when you are the one under the bus and people say, how can't you? are also human. Mm -hmm. You know, like Jesus, they said to him, yeah, you said you can break this temple in three days' time, you can rebuild it. Mm -hmm. Can you please rebuild it? You see, because yeah. only Jesus had the, the right of showing people to himself. Mm -hmm. Everyone has the right of showing the church to him. So, 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 so we, we, we are now being beaten by the false doctrines which we have introduced to the body of Christ. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, uh, you know, some, okay, this is out of order, but let me say it. Mm. You know, I had a conference, uh, you know, like a uh, uh, road rage mm -hmm. on the road. I insulted a, a fellow motorist on the road. Mm. Do you know what made him angry? Mm. He says, you know, I'm not angry because you have insulted me. Mm. What has made me angry is that you are a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> it so did have a problem with an mm. insult. The, the fact that is insulted where is it coming by, from? Oh, where, where is it coming from? Mm. So now, my, my, my sister, we have not done justice mm. to the body of Christ. Mm. The body of Christ is a balloon with air, mm. no proper foundational teachings. Mm. So now, when, when things happen, it's only when they realize, oh, it's also not, um, not uh, human mm -hmm. because he has found himself in a place of compromise. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something that I've learned about the Dutch Reformed Church. I come from the Dutch Reformed Church, mm -hmm. you know, and also what I've learned from these traditional churches. When a pastor is caught up in a sin or in a compromised position, they suspend you. Mm. And they announced to the congregation that uh, mm. we are suspending Pastor Enoch Piri for this reason and that reason. Mm -hmm. Then Pastor Piri will stay away from the pulpit for five years. And the same church will come back and say, we are now lifting up the suspension the of Pastor Piri and we are releasing him to go and pass the church in Sosanguve or in, uh, in, 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 in Mdansani or wherever. And the church in Mdansani will receive you. You know mm -hmm. why? Because people are grounded. Okay. With the teachings. Yeah. Mainly in the charismatic Pentecostal circle, yeah. sister. It's by fire, by force. Mm. People come there, you know, if we can 
microscope people's heads. We can even see how bolded they are mm. for being laid hands on. Mm. Because what we do, we don't we, we are not teaching the gospel. Yeah. We are just exciting people. We've got motivational speakers mm. on, on the pulpit. I love what you are doing and and I appreciate uh, the way you you present the gospel and the way you and Uncle Solomon and many others, the mm. way they, 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 they bring order in the body of Christ. Like mm. Solomon, I would, ne- I would never fight him. Mm. I've met S- Solomon several times after writing a lot of nonsense about mm-hmm. me. I meet him, I greet him, and I, 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 I celebrate what he does. You know yeah. what I mean? Because we need somebody who's going to speak order within mm. the body of Christ. And you are one of those people. I salute, but then I can't attack you, especially if what you are talking about is not against the gospel and is against purity. Mm-hmm. I'll embrace your attitude. So, <laughs> I'll turn up your this. Um, okay, let's, uh, in the, why do you say I don't like, in closing, because <laughs> I want to do better, man of God. I want to improve. <laughs> ne? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I need you to guide me now yeah, yeah, in closing. Yeah, Just yeah, guide yeah, me so yeah, that from yeah. here, Ngingi, I must not, you know, do the wrong things. You know, you see what, you know, you are doing something amazing. Like, this is just a joke. You're doing something amazing. You mm. know, you know, um, it, it, it's important mm. that we must have people like you, people like Solomon and others mm-hmm. who are going to speak the truth uh, and who are going to be a, a prophetic voice to the body of Christ because we can't carry on doing the same, the things that we're doing. Mm-hmm. It's an embarrassment. Mm-hmm. You, you, know, you know, like uh, if you look at my social media uh, uh, platform, I'm not called Pastor Enoch Piri or Bishop Enoch Piri. I'm mm. called Enoch Piri because, uh, because it's so embarrassing even to associate yourself to mm. the office of being a pastor as a result of the mess which is happening in the body of Christ. So mm. if we've got men and women like you who are able to point out the wrongs which are happening, as long as you are defending the, the gospel of Christ, I'm with you. I've got a problem with people who want to defend the so-called man of God mm. or defend the so-called woman of God. Then there's a problem with that. Mm. But if a man and uh, if, a, if men and women like you who defend the integrity of the gospel, mm. I'll go for it, no matter how bad it is. I remember when you took me to social media when, when. <laughs> it, it is painful. But at the yeah. end of the day, there should be somebody who points out what is wrong mm-hmm. to be considered as wrong. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? The Bible says time has, be- has come for judgment to begin in the house of the Lord. In short, you're doing something amazing. Ah. Mara, not, not for me. Okay. It, because it's not favoring you in this season, ne? Yeah. Ah, Mara, we are way past that. <laughs> Let, let's just shake hands. Let's shake hands. <laughs> I apologize if I offended, if I offended you, men of God. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, for the gospel, I'm willing to, I'm willing to take all the absolutely, hate. Absolutely, absolutely. And also, I always say that... Um, if ever you are presented with an opportunity to shoot at me for my wrongdoings, make sure you, sh- you do not miss because when tables are turned and I have to come at you for the gospel, I will not even sure. shoot. I will one shot, one take. <laughs> yes, that's You'll me. be a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's not personal. It's all Absolutely. about the gospel to say, uh, I also have been one person that because I, I, in my capacity, I felt that I was not in a position to stand in front of people. Because, man of God, it's not easy to stand in front of people mm, when, mm. when your own demons are confronting you. Yeah. I had to step down. Sure, you know? sure. In as much as right now, I'm preaching the gospel in a different way. I'm no longer standing in front of people with a mic and saying hallelujah every Sunday. But I do believe that I'm making change to the body of Christ. Right? Mm, mm. Uh, if I'm ever in a position where I feel like I am unable to do what I'm doing, I will not wait for you to see through me, then come and call me out, then put me down, because then I'll be very angry because sure. you caught me when I was not ready to actually let go. Yeah, I yeah, should be yeah. ready and willing to mm-hmm. say, listen, if I'm not serving, if, if I'm, I'm part of the body of Christ, which is rotten, cut mm-hmm. me out. If it means a new sure. branch must grow from where you have cut me, that's what the Bible encourages Absolutely. us. Absolutely. You understand? So because not, not everybody likes that and we like sugarcoating things as Christians, not everybody will like me. Uh, but also I would like to say thank you so much for joining me. We can go on and on and on and on and on. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would like to send a special shout out in closing to our sponsors, which is Hydro Quench for sponsoring us with the water. E2 has studio. Guys, I actually forgot E2 mm. has studio from the beginning. Hey? Is I forgot it. Yes, that's oh. the water. So they are partnering with us with all our events. You see, we're actually... Is it anointed pin- don't, don't water? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the holy water? <laughs> we, are, we have holy water from Hydro Quench. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and we also have Stan Studios, whoever is for getting Crown Lioness, also for sponsoring me with the dresses which are revealing the cleavage. See, it's very it's, tempting to be here, ladies and I, gentlemen. I apologize. I have prayed about it. I apologize <laughs> even to you viewers at home. Man of God, I apologize for showing me you my cleavage. Mm. Ne? <laughs> my dog, Salah, you are hot. Zouti. <laughs> You see now you want to trend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, with that being said, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Enoch Piru, for joining me. Thank you so much for the viewers at home. Uh, we shall see each other on the next one. Mwah.